That was no ordinary dream, it was a message, a sign from God. He's definitely the one. God just revealed my soulmate to me in a dream. Thank you Father for this wonderful revelation about my future partner. So, about this merger, it's kind of like a marriage, isn't it? In some ways, yes. But let's keep our analogies strictly business related, shall we? Of course. I just hope the other firm turns out to be a good husband for us. We're merging because it's the best move for both companies, not because we're searching for a life partner. Right, sorry about that. Marriage has just been on my mind a lot lately. Why is that? Did someone propose to you? Well, I had this dream a few nights ago. It felt so real, like a message from God. I saw this man, and I just can't shake off the feeling that he's my husband. Dreams can have meanings completely different from what we intend, Sarah. I've been trying to make sense of it, but the only meaning I could come up with is that something big is coming my way soon. Do you want my advice? Pray about it. I'll do that. When the representatives from the other firm arrive, can you please keep the conversation strictly on business? Mixing personal matters with business affairs is a big no for me. Don't worry, Mrs. Bridget. I'll be as professional as possible. The merger is my priority. Good to hear. Now, let's get back to work. They are here. Let's do this. Um, hey. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm David Richardson, representing our firm. And you are? Hi. I'm Sarah. Sarah Williams. Is everything all right, Miss Williams? Yeah. Yes, everything's fine. Hi. I'm just a bit. Ah. Uh. Sarah, what's going on? Hi. Hi. Ah. Uh. Yes, um, sorry. Excuse me. Is she all right? I'm not sure. I'll go check on her. Please, make yourselves comfortable. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bridget. I don't know what came over me. Tell me, what happened back there? The man in the conference room. He was the same man from my dream. I couldn't believe it. It threw me off completely. Sarah, I specifically told you not to let your personal life interfere with business matters. This is exactly what I was afraid of. I know, and I'm sorry. You are off the case. What? Mrs. Bridget, I'm the most qualified person to handle this merger. If you give the case to someone else now, it could jeopardize everything we've worked for. You think I don't know that? But you've put me in a difficult position already as it is. Please, Mrs. Bridget, I promise I can handle this. Just give me another chance. I can't take that risk. I'm going to find someone to fix your mess. I suggest you pray to God that I'm successful. <laughs> Mr. Richardson, thank you for coming today. I believe we've made significant progress. Indeed, Mrs. Bridget. I'm confident this merger will benefit both firms. Sarah, would you care to apologize to Mr. Richardson? Hi. I'm sorry for leaving the room abruptly earlier. It was unprofessional of me. I see. I thought you were the firm's attorney. Sarah is one of the representatives of our firm in matters involving mergers. I promise you, the drama she put up in there is not a usual occurrence here. I see. There's no harm done, Miss Sarah. We all have our moments. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. And I apologize once again. No need to dwell on it. I'll have the final documents faxed to your office as soon as possible. Have a nice day. Before you say any word, I'd like you to know he's married, and he's an atheist. What? Are you sure? I picked up on it during our meeting. He mentioned it casually in conversation. I... I had no idea. But the dream... I know this comes as a shock, Sarah. But it's important to separate fantasy from reality. 
David Richardson is not the man for you. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever been so close to something you really want, only to find out you can't have it? Oh, all the time. Like that last piece of cake in the fridge. It's there, but it's not for me. Um, what's going on, Sarah? Remember that dream I told you about? The one with the man on the beach? Yeah, I remember. What about it? Well, I... I met him. At the office, a few days ago. What? Really? That's... Wow. Yeah, but... But he's married. And he's an atheist. Oh, Sarah, I'm so sorry. That must have been really tough to find out. I think I know why God showed me the dream. Maybe he's not my husband. Maybe God wants me to help influence David to change his belief about the existence of God, don't you think? Sarah, I think you're treading on dangerous ground here. I believe God brought us together for a reason. And whatever reason could it be if not because I'm meant to show him the way? Maybe, but maybe not. Guess what? I've been doing some digging since our last conversation, and I think I may have found a way for you and that David guy to be together. Mimi, I never asked you to do any digging for me. I know, but you mentioned wanting to change David's belief, remember? There's no way you could do that unless you're somehow involved in his life. I suppose you have a point. All right, tell me what you found. There's an event coming up next week. And David is one of the speakers. What type of event? It's about atheism. Apparently, he's quite prominent in that community. Are you sure you still want to pursue this course? I can do it. I've faced challenges like this before. Remember how I converted my dad, who never set foot in a church? That's true. I forgot you have a knack for changing hearts and minds. Well, hello there. What brings you to our little gathering? Oh, um, I'm here for the event. No way. I had no idea you were an atheist the last time we met. I'm not. But when a friend gave me the flyer, I just knew I had to come. Well, I'm glad you did. This event is going to be eye-opening. It'll liberate you from the chains of religion. Well, I beg to differ. Really? Would you like to share your thoughts with the audience? We're always open to new perspectives. Oh, I'm not sure I'm prepared for that. Maybe another time. Fair enough. Why don't you sit with me during the event? We can discuss our views together. I'd like that. You can have your seat. Mr. Richardson faxed the documents for the merger, and he also requested your involvement in an upcoming case. That's great news. I must have made quite an impression on him. Your first encounter with Mr. Richardson wasn't exactly impressive, unless, of course, you've been seeing each other since then. What? No, of course not. Why would you insinuate that? Because David mentioned your brilliant contribution at a recent event you both attended. Oh. I see. Sarah, I need to make something clear. David is married and I won't tolerate any inappropriate behavior between you two. What I do in my personal life is none of your business, Mrs. Bridget. It is when it affects your work. I will not allow you to work on any case with David. That's final. You can't do that. I can and I will. I keep telling you, you need to learn to separate your personal feelings from your professional responsibilities, Sarah. Fine. Sarah. I have some exciting news. What is it? Mrs. Bridget just assigned me to work on a case with David Richardson. That's amazing. I know, right? And here's the best part. I only need to convince Mrs. Bridget that you are the best person for the job, and just like that, you'll be working alongside David. David originally wanted me for the case. Mrs. Bridget, however, 
found out we've been hanging out together. Now she won't agree to us working together. Oh, Sarah, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's not your fault. Wait, I have an idea. What if you two work together on the case, but we don't let Mrs. Bridget know about it? Do you think we could do that? Absolutely. We'll keep it under wraps and get the job done without any interference. That would be incredible, Mimi. Thank you so much. Of course, Sarah. I'll always have your back. Hello, David. I'm ready to help put some bad guys away. Sarah, but I got a memo from Mrs. Bridget saying that a certain Mimi would be taking your place on this case. Oh, that's just a slight misunderstanding with Mrs. Bridget. I've already worked it out with her. In that case, welcome aboard. Are you a member of this club, or did someone give you this journal? Of course I'm a member. You're missing out by not being a member. I can't afford to be one right now. I'm not yet part of the big leagues like you. But I do try to read their journal every chance I get to nap Mrs. Bridget's copy. Although lately, I haven't had the opportunity to read their recent copies, probably because Mrs. Bridget has realized what I've been up to. Well, you can keep that one. Our case is about an embezzlement by one of the senior partners of a gaming company. It's quite complicated, and we'll be spending multiple late nights together. Are you ready for that? I will after we grab something to eat first. Fair enough. What restaurant do you have in mind? Hi, darling. Don't darling, me, David. What's wrong? Where are you coming from this late? Work. I was at the office. Really? Because according to a reliable source, you were at Hydro Guest House with a woman. I was with my colleague discussing a case. It was strictly business. Oh, sure. We all know what other things you could be doing with your colleague under the pretense of business. Betty, you know I would never do anything to betray you. Right, just like how you never did anything with Lisa from accounting, or that intern from last year. That's enough, Betty. I'm tired of your accusations. I'm going to bed. <laughs> You won't believe how my time with David went today. It's like he can read my thoughts. He always says the right thing at the right time. It's unlike any guy I know. Well, he is an intelligent person. It's to be expected from someone like him. Yeah, but why do the good ones always seem to be taken? I wish I had an answer to that, Sarah. I've been asking myself the same question too. But remember, your reason for working with him is to convert him to the Christian faith not to get swept off your feet by him. I promise, I won't let my feelings get in the way. Sarah, I have something for you. A membership card to the club. But how? I paid for a six-month membership fee in full. Consider it a gift. Oh, I'm sorry, David. I didn't mean to. Don't be sorry, unless of course... You really are sorry? Um. Well. I'm not sorry. Let's just say, I'm interested in more than just discussing legal matters with you, Sarah. I can see you are on the same page too. 